As a quick reminder, in the first part I was doing this Arduino board prototype and this is where I arrived. It is controllable manually or by a computer. Now I am going to put this board into a case and build the mechanical parts made out of electric motors and gears. I found this power MOSFET module which they claim to withstand 50 watts and it takes easily 2.6 amps with no heatsink. I'll show you later that my motor takes about 3 amperes in full load. The case for the controller is from an old computer power supply that had exploded and I tried to squeeze all the components inside including an old la laptop power supply, 12 volts, 5 amperes to power the stuff and uh, turn the motors. I had to cut a hole to fit the display. The space inside is very limited, so all the boards had to be stuck and squeezed tight. This is a 5 volt car charger for foreign charging. I want to use it to power the boards. Now about motors. This is a car windshield wiper motor from a Peugeot 407 made by Bosch. It's missing this cover. I stripped all the accessories. Because this big reduction gear is made out of plastic, it's a bad idea to weld this shaft. The heat will destroy the plastic gear. I wanted to test how much current it draws and uh, what is the lowest voltage before stalling. Testing at 12 volts nominal voltage. At startup it takes in 4 amps. Then it stabilizes at nearly 2 amps without load. Trying to add some load holding the shaft, I had a little Ow. accident. That's where it pinched me. Son of a bitch. We are going to 3 amps and something. But there's no way I can stop it. Lower the voltage to half, 50%, 6 volts. I command the speed of the motor with PWM, pulse width modulation. And sometimes if you lower the average voltage too much, the motor will still spin at a lower speed. But then if you stop it, then start it again, it might not start. This time it started, but it might not start because there's not enough power to overcome the internal friction of the elements and the internal resistance. So at 6 volts, it does not stall. It starts nicely. It draws. 1.2 amps, half it again, 3 volts, 25%. It draws 0.8 amps. Mm, I can manage to draw 2 amps, but I can't stop it. But let's say I stop the motor, then under, under load, I try to start it. It starts without problem. So even at 3 volts, it starts under load without problem. I apply a load and drop the voltage to see where is the point that I can stop it. That's the lowest voltage my power supply can go. Even at 1.3, I can't stop it. I can't stop the motor. And if I stop it, it has no problem started again, starting again. Let's try with a little bit of wrench. Let's grip the axle. Well, I stole it. Three amps. That's great. That's brilliant. Thank you very much.
I'm going to apply some bandage here. Three months later, this baby was born. It's not my baby, it is adopted because it was made by a colleague of mine, which is much more skilled in um, mechanic engineers and uh, gears and cogs. Now I'm going to test uh, how much time it takes to make a full rotation 360 degrees at full power 12 volts. How to calibrate the potentiometer to correctly read the antenna position in the software? Well, uh, the Arduino reads the analog input as values between 0 and 1023. So theoretically this corresponds to 0 like 0 degrees and 1023 to 359 degrees. But uh, because our potentiometers uh, do not reach their uh, entire excursion so when the antenna reaches zero degrees the potentiometer uh, does not uh, output zero a higher value like 64 for example so 64 corresponds to zero degrees and the maximum value of the potentiometer which in my case is one kilo ohm it outputs uh, a lower value let's say 1000 so 1000 uh, read it by the board uh, corresponds to 359 degrees so these uh, two new uh, limits should be programmed and calculated in uh, the software taken into account as uh, 0 and 359 degrees I wrote a small code to calibrate a little bit the device I'm uploading it Yeah, we have a dog here. In elevation, I'm starting with the lowest position. The lowest position is about zero. And the highest value corresponding to 90 degrees is 1018 okay at zero we have 69 68 so welcome to the brand new world of sensors where for each reading we have a slightly different value you see nothing is spinning the azimuth reading was uh, giving a random position due to noise and uh, other sensor reading and thus the antenna position was jumping all over the shop so and as a solution I uh, averaged the last 20 readings of the azimuth position thus smoothing the reading and also I uh, added a dead spot of one degree left or right of the current position to stop the motor continually adjusting the position so uh, shaking and uh, continuously starting stopping the motor has stopped and I got a smooth silent ride the software can withstand almost anything but how to mitigate some hardware limitations 
For example, while rotating, the cables wrap around the pole. The radars can rotate indefinitely because they have a thing called rotary joint. They are expensive and I don't use one. So if I rotate in one direction, I have to turn around at some point to reel back the cables. Some commercial rot rotators allow for some 400 degrees rotation, but I decided to keep it simple with 360 degrees, with 359 stop, zero start. This causes some particularities in tracking some orbits. If the satellite passes like this or like this, there are no problems. But if the orbit crosses zero degrees, like this, the antenna has to turn around to follow the bird. There will be some reception transmission downtime with this bus, but I try to rotate the antenna around as quickly as possible. For the same reason not to shake the antenna too much, I have implemented a soft stop algorithm, which works like this. Well, if the antenna points uh, anywhere around the target, we apply 100% power to move it as fast as possible towards the target. But uh, if uh, the difference between the target and the antenna position drops uh, below 10 degrees, then I reduce the power to 60%. Then if we get closer than 6 degrees, I reduce power to 30%, thus reducing the antenna speed ensuring some sort of break and uh, if we are within plus minus one degrees around the target we uh, basically do not do nothing we stop the antenna so the precision is plus minus one degree or more let's say plus minus two degrees but that's not too bad that's actually excellent an excellent compromise to stop the antenna shaking and to track precisely the target um, because the antenna diagram is far more than 10 degrees wide and we can't even orient the antenna towards the north uh, with that much precision. So with this new information and algorithms updated into the software I let it uh, play a little bit inside the shop to see how it performs. It was performing exceptionally well so I took it outside and let it play for the rest of the day.
So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It was great. It was chasing satellites all day long. It works perfect. Okay, I want to go back to the 